order and we'll move out the room. Before we get to the athletic, this question's for both of you guys, and Brad, I'd like to ask uh, how do you answer this kind of from the owner's perspective more than anything. Um, would you be in favor of this event becoming a points race and moving away from just being an exhibition? I, I, I don't think there's a good way to answer that. I, I think that um, to, to me, as I look at this, I think there's a lot of possibilities of, of things that you could do with other venues. I like it as a, something that could, could move around and go to different spots. And, and I think when you look at the stadium aspect of things, it opens up possibilities to take this event to different countries and, and, and different parts of the world to expose our sports. So um, yeah, or you could have a stadium series. So I don't know. It, it, you know. I think there's a lot of options. I think this has opened a lot of doors that probably um, you know, in, in the past weren't really expected to be open. Because when I came here last year, I really thought this was going to be a joke, personally. And it was probably one of the races that I had the most fun at last year. And you look at the atmosphere and everything that happened, it was, it was a great event. And, and I think coming back this year, everybody's looking forward to it. Yeah, I think Jordan. About that. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Jordan, I, I think it's, uh, it's a great venue. They did a heck of a job. Similar to Kevin, I, I had some pretty big concerns coming in here last year, and, and um, I was blown out of the water by what I saw here. I thought they did an amazing job. So the potential is here to do so many different things, points races, or, or carry the idea to, to other venues that uh, I, I think it's, it's certainly in, in one year's time earned a lot of respect within the industry that opens up numerous doors and opportunities. So uh, how that plays forward, I, I know I'm pretty open-minded to as both a driver and an owner and uh, look forward to, to seeing it do just that play out. Great, Jesse. We'll go to Greg and Jeff and Zach. No, Dustin. Uh, hey, Kevin. Um, I just retired too, so I'm not going to make any retirement jokes. Um, but I do want to ask, everything you do this year is going to be your last, your final one. Barring any, you know, one-offs, you know, come back and win a Daytona 500. Not going to happen. Well, I'm just saying, I'm saying, you know, yeah. does that change your mindset? Because a lot of times, you know, the years can kind of run together, if you know what I mean. You know, you're going to race at Daytona, and you'll be back at Daytona, you'll race at Bristol, you'll be back at Bristol, that kind of thing. But these are going to be now coming to the, the final ones. Does that kind of change your mindset at all, or is it business as usual? But I think when you, when you look at events now, I, I think it allows you to, to look back at the things that you've been a part of and, and you know, be in the moment at, at these particular events and, and really every event as, as you go to in, in different parts of the, the country. You, you know, you have your, your spots that you like to eat or things you like about the track or people that you know in that area. And, and so I'm fortunate to have done this for a long time. I feel like the timing of, of everything is, is really good. I go into events and, and, you know, I feel like we prepare and we go to the event, we do what we're supposed to do and we, and we go home. So, you know, I'm definitely going to try to enjoy um, you know the, the moments that you that you have at, at the racetrack and, and but in, in the end I, I feel really good about the, the timing of um, stepping out of the car at the, at the end of the year so I am looking forward to to going to all these places for the last time but um, you know I think as you go through the, the moments and, and different things you'll, you'll start to remember and, and uh, celebrate things as we go along the way Jeff And then last, last year you sat up here in the same spot and, and you were the first one that had declared it a success right away before we even saw a car check. You said, uh, I don't think you can screw it up at this point. You can't, I'm telling you, the race doesn't even matter. Year two, does it change or is this setting, you know, focus on the entertainment, the show, that kind of thing, always gonna be the nature of this race? I think, I think all of our races need to be great events. And I think when, when you go and you watch a Super Bowl, the event is great, no matter what happens in the game, because it's the you know it's the Super Bowl and everything that leads up to and builds up to, and, and so I think that's that's one thing that as 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 we go along to all the races we need to be we need we need more events. And when we go to Chicago this year, it's going to be a great event before we ever even get there, and, and who knows how the how the race will go. And, and I think as as you look at the atmosphere and, and everything that, that has come with this particular event, it'll be probably be better than it was last year, just because of the fact that everybody knows how it works and, and um, all the lead up and hype and anticipation is is still there for for uh, everything as as we've come in, in here this year. So, 
I don't, I don't think it'll be worse. What is Zach and Dustin? Zach Sterney, a little with NASCAR.com. Excuse me. Uh, for Brad, um, knowing that Kevin's retiring at the end of this season, I'm just curious um, your takes on kind of his career and what Kevin has meant to the sport. I, mean, I know it might be a little weird with it. Right, I was going to say, you're right there. But um, knowing that he's That's the super awkward. Yeah. Awkward. yeah. I'll answer that. He can answer it by his first. No, um, no, I mean. Are you retiring too? No, God, no. God, no. I, I have got two kids and a lot of bills to pay. Um, Someone once told me earlier in my career, if you want to be good as a race car driver, stay in debt because uh, you'll make uh, different decisions. So I've, uh, I've done too good of a job at that lately. So uh, no no plans. I've got, got a lot of a lot of stuff to do. But um, no, I think I, I obviously look at, at Kevin and, and think of the opportunity that, that he had, you know, was it 20 years ago? 22? 23. 23. And... Um, I can't imagine having to go through that set of circumstances, uh, which, uh, you know, and the weight that would come with that and all that, and, and trying to, to take that forward and uh, to be able to do that and, and to overcome those, you know, that weight and, and to win races at, at all three levels and championships uh, as owner driver at all three levels. I, I, I can't think of anyone else that's done that, at least not in this era. Um, and, to the regard that, that he's done. And, and so, uh, you know, I think that's an, a, a tremendous accomplishment that, um, you know, it's easy to, to lose sight of. You know, we, we get so focused on what have you done like last week? And I think sometimes we lose sight on what people have done, you know, over their career and, and certainly sometimes even over just a few years. So, uh, you know, to take over that and then to, you know, have a, a, a new cup team, an opportunity uh, eight or nine years ago with, with, with Stuart Haas and to build that into a winner, uh, you know, that's, in itself, those are incredible accomplishments. So, uh, and then you think of all the different partners I think you've brought in the sport. You know, so you, you got the business side, you've got the competitive side, and, and, and it's kind of wins across both boards, which it's really hard to do. I think there's a lot of drivers that are, uh, or a lot of people in the sport that are successful in, in one piece of the environment, and, but to, to be successful in multiple pieces of the environment is that much more challenging. So. Uh, to be able to, to have that legacy is, is one that I'm sure Kevin's proud of. And, and as the industry uh, reflects back uh, over the course of the year, I, I hope it takes the time to, to remember as well. I'll pay you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, I've got one for both of you. I'll start with Brad. Um, from a team owner's perspective, can, can you give me a sense of what the value of this event is? Uh, obviously, it was a good TV rating last year, but also when you look at it, the purse is probably the lowest of any of the races. There's a cost to come out. How you, you know, how do you, I guess, come up with the value? What it means for a team for, for this type of event? Yeah, it's an interesting event. Uh, you know, when, when you look at the revenues of the race teams, the, the majority of the revenues are, are coming from the, the sponsors. So, uh, you know, it, it does okay for that. But uh, when you look at it for the, the value to the industry, it's probably the in my opinion, the second most valuable event that we have all year to the Daytona 500. Uh, you know, to be in, in Los Angeles, which is certainly a huge market. Uh, I read some graphic the, the other day from NASCAR that we have more fans in LA than any other area, which is hard to think of. Uh, but of all the regions we go to, there's more NASCAR fans here than anyone else. So I think we lose sight of that sometimes, but uh, to, to be able to be in their, their backyard and to, to engage them uh, for a key event, I think that's that's really important. And of course, uh, for our TV partners, uh, this is a, a tremendous event as well. And you know, they're the lifeblood of our sport in so many different ways, as, as the probably the primary revenue generator. So, uh, you know, from the team perspective, uh, you know, it's it's probably more neutral. Uh, but uh, you know, from an industry perspective, this is a significant event for us. And Kevin, for you, with your years of experience and, and how the cars have evolved, you know, I remember conversations with drivers in the past where it was so much more about the car than the driver. And certainly the driver has always played a role, but in some cases maybe not as significant. And I'm curious, with this car, how are you seeing what the impact of a driver can have and how does that compare with some of the other versions of the car that, that, that you've raced in the past? When you step into a car that, that a team has scienced out, it's it's particularly easy uh, because of the fact that the driver can get in and they can tell them what to do, where it becomes difficult, and Brad can 
can speak to this as well with what he stepped into. It's, it's incredibly important to be a part of the conversation and a part of the progression of, of the race team because the things that you say and the things that you do and how you communicate those things and how you follow through on those things, the things you push for, the things you give for, are, are extremely important to the direction of the race team and the decisions that are made in the, in the development of setups and um, really whatever else you're, you're trying to develop, whether it's simulator, whether it's setups, whether it's at the track, you're a piece of that puzzle and you're a piece, piece of that puzzle that, that has, you know, the, the biggest feel of the car and, and the things that they're changing and the things that are happening and whether they work or don't work and whether that relates to simulation or the simulator and, and how those all of those programs proceed forward um, you know is whether it's positive or negative um, you know, can, can be it can be detrimental to have to take eight ten steps backwards to try to unwind things as you as you make a wrong move in, in the development so an experienced driver and, and learning how to test and develop is, is not a quality that a lot of our younger guys have because they've never had to um, run a test or be responsible for the decisions that are being made from the engineering staff and, and a lot of them are very agreeable uh, to to what people say and, and, and deep down they know that that's probably not what they felt but they just don't want to rock the boat so you have to have that that um, you have to have that franchise leader to be able to make those decisions and the staff and everybody believe, okay, what I said uh, as a driver is what we're, what they're going to do and, or a blend of the engineering staff and the crew chiefs and the people making the decisions on what we're gonna do to the car. So there's always something to develop. You, you know, they, can, they can keep simplifying everything and it's just gonna make it harder to, you know, to, to kick the crumbs out um, that, that are better to, to make the car go faster. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a never ending, it's a never ending progression. And, um, you know, the, the driver is a key part of that to keep, to keep the organization on par from a competition standpoint, to keep the cars progressing forward. But Holly? Brad, you have a year under your belt as the team owner and driver. What do you feel most optimistic about? this season? Ooh. Yeah, you know, I think Holly, um, you, know, you come into it, kind of piggyback a little bit off of Kevin's comments that, you know, when, when you, your responsibility as a driver in a lot of ways is to kind of find the last five, ten percent of a car and, and optimize the performance around that. And um, what's really tough is, you know, when you start at 60 percent, even if you get five or ten percent, you're still at a 70%, right? Um, and we just, we started the year, last year so far behind, I didn't feel like that could even really help. Um, so, you know, getting halfway through the year, it started to get to where, uh, you know, I, I think my feedback and input was, was valuable and we started to, to make the right moves. And then you kind of naturally run into this trap that the things you need to fix, you either don't have the time to fix uh, or you're contractually limited uh, with people or uh, you know tools and contracts and so forth, and you, you literally just have to endure the pain to get to an off season. So this was a really important off season for us at RFK to uh, really apply a lot of the super painful lessons of last year, and uh, I think we've done a lot of that. We, we've said, all right, we know what we don't know, and now we got to fix it, and then we got through the off season and, and we want to work and, and really dug down deep on a, a number of projects, uh, you know, some internal, some external, some people related, some resources related, and, and I can't say that we've got all of them checked off, but we, we, uh, we made a lot of progress this off season. So uh, I'm super optimistic to see uh, that play out on the racetrack. Apologize again, we can't get to everybody. We're gonna wrap up here with Jeff, uh, and then we'll let these gentlemen go. Brad, you missed the main last year here, but do you like a format that sends people home? Like, do you like that storyline uh, for NASCAR? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, there's only one winner at the end of the day. So whether you go home early or late, you know, it's kind of all the same in, in some regard. But, uh, you know, there's there's always the pressures of, hey, partners and getting them on the racetrack and the business model and economics of that. But in the end, we have to do what's best for the fans. And, and for the from that perspective, I, I think obviously, to put on an event like this, it's difficult to put 36 cars on the track and uh, and make something that is the best product possible for the fans. So 
I think I would look at it always through the lens of what's best for the fans. And in this event, I think a few cars have to go home to make that the best of the Kevin, Brad, thank you so much for your time and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.